Howdy folks! It's nice to see you at the ASHS annual conference in 2020. Um, we are going to talk about a subject which has become near and dear to my heart since I began working at the University of Florida's Gulf Coast Research and Education Center in the Agihara Horticultural Sciences Lab in September of 2018. We are going to talk about the application of simple image processing and analysis using ImageJ for horticultural research and extension. ImageJ is a free image processing program developed at the National Institutes of Health. It can be downloaded relatively quickly and easily. Gathering data for images using ImageJ has some advantages. Taking field pictures can sometimes be very quick compared to gathering data in other ways. It also costs very little because all you need is a camera and ImageJ, which is free. Using ImageJ is also more precise than many manual measurements and can obtain multiple measurements from the same image. But the photos themselves are also good data and they can be used in presentations like this one. Data which can be gathered for horticultural research and extension by ImageJ typically falls in one of three categories length, area, or count data. Typical measurements under length include plant height, plant width, fruit shape, and root length. Area might include leaf area, canopy area, root surface or projected area, and disease or insect damage area. Some common count measurements are leaf number, fruit number, seed number, and leaf spot. Focusing on the first category of length for a moment and making the possibilities for image analysis with ImageJ more concrete, our lab uses ImageJ for obtaining the height of our hop plants as they grow throughout the season. It could also be used to measure tree height on a trellis growth system like apple trees in Washington or the Midwest. Rather than using a ruler or tape measure, ImageJ can obtain plant widths via scaled images. Rather than using calipers or a ruler to measure citrus rind width and fruit size in Florida and California, you can use ImageJ. And if you have scaled images for plant roots, you can determine root length using ImageJ, like we do in our lab for our rhizotron experiments. Moving back to hop height for a moment, let's compare two methods for gathering hop height data. You could use a measuring pole to measure the height for each hill in a research plot, like taking the height of a citrus tree. The measuring pole stretches to the height of the plant and displays the height at the base of the pole. However, one person cannot easily measure vine height at the base of the plant because one person cannot quickly see the top of the plant from the base of the plant to judge if the pole has been stretched far enough. So it might take two people to measure accurately and a lot of time for each hill. But it is relatively easy with image J. The first step to determine the height of the hot plant is to open the image. Go to File, Open, and navigate to where the image is on your computer. Another way to do that is to drag and drop the image. Just going to go ahead and um, transform this image so that it is faced in the appropriate direction. So we're going to go to image transform rotate 90 degrees right. There we go, that's a little better. Um, next go ahead and select the straight line tool on the graphical user interface, so this one right here, uh, and draw a line from the trellis wire to the base of the hill. So then I'm going to select the trellis wire over here. I'm just going to go ahead and click shift because I want it to be a straight line all the way to the base of the hill. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to go to um, analyze, set scale. In this case, the known distance is 579.12 unit of length centimeter. And then we're just going to go ahead and click OK, leave global unchecked. Um, now we're going to use the same straight line tool to draw a line from the top of the plant um, in the first hill to the base of the plant. Right. Um, now one trick that you can do in order to spot the um, top of the hill is to uh, magnify the image. And you can start drawing while it's magnified and then um, minimize it again. 
and wherever you put your cursor is wherever it will uh, magnify. So grab that shift. Now we are going to go to analyze measure. And then another way of getting the same information would be to go control M. That will also um, make a measurement in the same way. Next, focusing on specific examples in the category of area, our lab regularly uses ImageJ to capture the area of various plants and plant organs. We recently measured the leaf area for a number of pepper and hop leaves in the field using ImageJ with the help of an imaging apparatus to remove a background. We have a YouTube video we will be publishing shortly on our UF IFAS Horticultural Crop Physiology YouTube channel on the subject. We have also measured canopy area for strawberry, artichoke, pepper, and tomato experiments for a number of years at this point using overhead pictures captured with a digital camera and a selfie stick. We also have a YouTube video we will be posting shortly for that. Um, we have captured root surface area in our rhizotron experiments using image J, and we have also captured disease damage for blackberry and tomato leaves and cucumber research plots. We also already have a YouTube tutorial video for that last one. We have a YouTube channel where we continuously generate and post tutorial and other videos relevant to our lab, and these three videos about area capture with ImageJ are the first three in what will hopefully be an extended series of ImageJ tutorials. Moving back to canopy area for a moment, let's compare two methods for gathering canopy area. During my MS at the University of Florida, I demonstrated the growth of the strawberry plants by marking two plants from each research plot and averaging the diameter of the widest point with the diameter perpendicular to it. Had I been so inclined, this average diameter could have been used to approximate the radius, which could have been used to approximate the area. This method is fast, but it is also imprecise. You can gather the same information more precisely with image J. In order to scale your images when you know the scale of your beds, first open the file. This is an overhead photograph of strawberry plants. After your file is open, select the straight line tool in the ImageJ graphical user interface and draw a line to an object of known size, in this case the bed width. Go to Analyze, Set Scale, to set the scale of the line you just drew. Um, in this case, previous work has been done and we know known distance in this case is 71.12 centimeters. Um, we're going to leave global unchecked and click OK. In order to measure the canopy area after you've already set scale, you're going to want to go to Image, Adjust, Color Threshold to separate the canopy from the background. Um, you're going to want to adjust the color threshold parameters, which include hue, saturation, and brightness. Hue is a color appearance parameter which describes pure spectrum colors. The hue range of 50 to 100 works for most images of this kind. Um, saturation and brightness vary somewhat more depending upon the quality of the image. Um, it seems to work OK. I'm going to click Select, and then we are going to go to Process, Binary, Make Binary to convert the image to a black and white. We are going to use the Paintbrush tool in order to remove large clusters of pixels that do not belong to the object of interest. Uh, we're going to double click, um, brush with 50, color white, um, we're going to leave Paint on Overlay unchecked, click OK. There we go. Just getting the big clusters in this case, which were weeds before. And then in order to get the um, small clusters of pixels, we are going to go to um, process, noise, remove outliers. We're going to want to select the radius that can remove outliers without deleting a significant portion of the canopy. In this case, a radius of 8 and a threshold of 50 and um, outliers dark um, seems to work OK. We're going to click OK. Next, we are going to go to um, Analyze Set Measurements. And in this case, we want Area. 
and we want to limit it to the threshold and then click OK and then we're going to measure so control M. Finally focusing on concrete examples in the count category image J can count leaves like Arapidopsis leaves in a rosette configuration with most leaves visible from overhead with the click and count capability of the cell counter plugin. It is also possible by thresholding to count red strawberry fruit in image J. In citrus breeding, breeders can quantify how seedy a new variety is by using image J to count the seed. Researchers in Iowa could also quickly identify the number of seed kernels in a corn cob with image J. The same video our lab generated recently for diseased leaf area also outlines how to quantify leaf spots on a tomato leaf. Let's compare two methods for counting a couple handfuls of corn seed. You could use a color sorter. During my undergraduate at Iowa State, I had the pleasure of participating in many seed science labs in their seed laboratory, and I got to use their color sorter. A color sorter can also count seed quickly and with a high level of accuracy. Color sorters do, however, cost a couple bucks. If you don't have the resources to buy that equipment, but you still want to count the corn on your cob, you can also use image J. In order to count the number of kernels, we're going to first open the image in image J. Then we're going to go to um, image adjust color threshold. And we're going to adjust the different parameters um, over here. So in this case, default actually works quite well. So we're just going to go ahead and select Then we're going to go to process binary, make binary. Um, and that converts the image to black and white. Then we're going to go to process noise, remove outliers in order to get rid of the small pixel clusters that we don't want. Um, all of the settings that we had in for the last image actually work well for this as well. Just getting rid of the small pixels. Uh, go ahead and click OK. Then we're going to go to process binary watershed and that puts a one pixel line between the kernels. Um, and then finally we're going to go to analyze, analyze particles to count the kernels. Um, we're going to fill in the following options. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And then there's our drawing. Um, if you um, zoom in, you can see the numbers over here. Um, this is a uh, count of 1,141 seeds, which would have been very hard to do by hand, so glad that we have image J. I'm just going to go ahead and save this as a TIFF. Um, and we're going to save this one as a TIFF as well. And then we're good. That sums up our overview of using ImageJ for horticultural research and extension. These are the links to the UF IFAS Horticultural Crop Physiology YouTube channel and also the ImageJ playlist. Well, that is a wrap. Do you have any questions?